Today we are discussing all things clothing, and we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's head inside and let's get to it. Seven Days to Die is a survival game. One of the survival aspects that you must contend with is the elements. Mother Nature is brutal, and can take her toll on your character. So in order to combat Mother Nature, Seven Days to Die has implemented a clothing system. There are several articles of clothing in Seven Days to Die. Each of these pieces of clothing will give you a boost to your cold or heat resistance, thus giving you the protection you need to stave off Mother Nature. Most clothing in Seven Days to Die can be crafted once you have read the Needle and Thread books. While this book series is probably one of the least useful series in the game, it does offer a few unique perks. For instance, book one gives you the ability to craft winter wear. So if you are in the snow biome, this would be a very handy book to have indeed. Book four does the same for desert wear. So if you are spawned into the desert biome, the ability to craft desert wear could come in handy. And probably the most important volume in the Needle and Thread series is Needle and Thread Volume 7. This gives you the ability to craft the Clothing Double Pocket Mod. This is a mod that can go on either your shirt, your pants, or your overcoat that will increase your carrying capacity by two. Generally speaking, however, you will not be crafting a lot of clothing. It is everywhere. Heck, just hit up one of the new Savage Country stores and you will have all the clothes you will ever need. However, the ability to craft the clothing double pocket mods is extremely important. Definitely be on the lookout for Needle and Thread Volume 7. Now, let's take a look at some specific clothing items. I've gone ahead and grouped these items in a very specific way. The first group we're going to talk about is your basic clothing items. And of course, I am talking about the plant fiber clothing. These clothing items can be crafted at the very beginning of the game. In fact, you actually craft the plant fiber shirt and pants as part of the beginning quests. They do not offer much in the way of cold or heat resist, but in the very, very beginning of the game, they are better than nothing. The only exception to this is the plant fiber hat because the plant fiber hat actually offers pretty decent heat resist. Gives you a heat resist of seven, as opposed to the other ones that give you a heat resist of either one or two. So the plant fiber hat is actually a pretty decent piece of clothing. It doesn't cost hardly anything to craft, and it will keep you cool if you are in the desert region. Also, the plant fiber clothing, it's not very stylish, doesn't look very good. But again, in the very beginning of the game, it's better than nothing. The next group of clothing we want to take a look at is your winter wear. This group of items will boost your cold resist more than anything. Starting off with the bandana. This will actually goes on your face slot and will give you a cold resist of plus three. It also adds a little bit of heat resist, but generally speaking, this is considered a winter wear gear because it increases your cold resist much more than your heat resist. Other items on this list are the flannel shirt, the sweatshirt, we have the skull cap, we have the jacket, we have the hooded sweatshirt, we have a suit jacket, the college jacket, and the big boy of the group, the puffer coat. This will give you a cold resist of 24. If you are in the winter biome, you definitely want to be wearing yourself a puffer coat. The next group of clothing will increase your heat resist. These items are great if you are going to be out and about in the desert. Starting with the ZU Fan Shirt. This will give you a heat resist of seven. Then we've got the shorts and the skirt. Those are pants that will give you a heat resist of eight. We have the Press Boy Cap, which also gives you a heat resist of eight. We have the tank top and the t-shirt, which both give you a heat resist of nine. We have the baseball cap, which gives you a heat resist of 10. The cowboy hat, which gives you a heat resist of 11. And the Mac Daddy of them all, the leather poncho, which gives you a heat resist of 13. The next group of clothing I'm going to call our all around collection, because these items will increase both your heat resist as well as your cold resist. 
Starting with the overalls, which give you a cold resist of five and a heat resist of four. As do the denim pants, the suit pants, and the shirt. Then a little higher on the list, we have the BDU top, the BDU bottoms, and the gothic pants. These all give you a cold and heat resist of right around eight. These stats do vary a little bit, but generally speaking, you're gonna be right around eight for your both your cold and heat resist. And last, we have the leather duster. The leather duster gives you a great increase to both cold and heat resist. Cold resist of 15 and a heat resist of 18. I actually prefer the leather duster to the leather poncho if I'm gonna be out in the desert. Leather poncho only gives you a heat resist of 13, whereas the leather duster gives you the heat resist of 18. Now, let's take a look at your choice of footwear. First, we have the worn boots and the basic running shoes. These both give you a cold and heat resist of two. Next up, we have the dress shoes. These give you a cold resist of three and a heat resist of four. We have the cowboy boots, which gives you a cold resist of four and a heat resist of three. And last but not least, we have the high performance running shoes. These are a specialty item that not only give you a cold resist of three and a heat resist of one, they also give you a stamina regen of plus 20% while running. The next section of clothing is the hazmat suit. Now, according to the description, hazmat gear supposedly protects you from radiation and keeps you dry and warm. You'll notice that each piece does give you cold resist, so the warm part is right. But as for protecting you from radiation, the hazmat suit does a very bad job. Even wearing a full hazmat suit, if you actually venture into a radiated zone, you will not last very long. It will kill you quickly. Honestly, there really is no purpose to the hazmat suit as of right now. Although I guess it does look a bit apocalyptic. And the last section of clothing we want to talk about are the specialty clothing items. Each of these items gives you a special bonus while wearing them. The shades will give you plus one to your perception attribute. The cigar will give you plus one to strength, plus a 10% boost to bartering. The tough guy glasses give you plus one to fortitude. The ski goggles give you plus one to agility. The nerdy glasses give you plus one to intellect, decrease your crafting time by 10%, and give you a 10% boost to XP. Next, we have the lucky goggles. These will give you a loot bonus and decrease the dig radius for buried supply quests, as well as treasure quests. And the last item is the night vision goggles. These things are pretty cool. They used to be really, really bad, but in the recent updates, they've actually improved the night vision goggles, and they actually work pretty well. The survival aspect of Seven Days to Die is multifaceted. One area that you will need to pay attention to in order to survive in Seven Days to Die is your choice of clothing. You have to survive the elements. As such, you'll want to make sure you dress according to the biome you are going to be visiting. If you're heading to the desert, make sure and wear your desert gear that gives you great heat resist. If you're heading to the winter biome, make sure and bring your winter wear that gives you that extra cold resist. Or, if you're in one of the temperate biomes, like the forest, everyday wear will be fine. And if you're just lounging around your house, there's nothing wrong with a pink skirt, pink tank top, pink boots, and a pink cowboy hat. Let's face it, folks, I make this look good. Now aside from the eye candy that is this sexy beast, I really hope you folks found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. Speaking of which, I've created a special playlist containing tutorial videos with similar subject matter. All you have to do is click that box in the top right of your screen. 
But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.